Money. Okay. Which doctors make the most money? Let's get into it. What's up, everyone? Mike Molnar here. I'm an internal medicine doctor from Los Angeles, California. And today, oh, have we got a video for you. We're going to talk about which doctors make the most money. Now, don't get too excited. These $100 bills are fake. But, uh, you know, let's just cut right to the chase. Uh, the highest paid medical specialty is actually my specialty. It's internal medicine. Uh, we make an average of... Hey, what's so funny? Hey, come on. I... Okay, I'm just kidding. The highest paid medical specialty is definitely not internal medicine. I didn't go into this job for the money. Uh, the highest paid specialties will, generally speaking, be the surgical subspecialties. So this is the physician compensation report by this organization called Medscape. Every year they release a bar graph outlining the different average compensations for the different medical specialties. And this year, highest on the list is plastic surgery. Uh, they say $576,000 per year. Now, I do kind of question this a little bit because they don't have all specialties listed. Uh, for example, neurosurgery, brain surgeons or spine surgeons, I think they might make even more like 700,000 or even up into the seven figure range. Uh, but in any event, uh, this is a pretty good graph. And I can see if you scroll down, and you keep scrolling, you scroll, 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 get tired, take a break, maybe have your friend take over, keep scrolling down, down, down. Eventually, you will find my specialty, internal medicine, but uh, it's much lower on the graph. So that's not exciting, but let's take a look at the highest paid specialties here. So plastic surgery at the top, 576,000. Orthopedics is next, 557,000. Uh, just under that is actually cardiology. So that's a subspecialty of internal medicine. Those are our doctors like me. They do three years of internal medicine, but then they do an additional three years of cardiology fellowship. Uh, so they're right under. Um, I'm wondering if that's interventional cardiology, though, versus uh, general cardiology, because there are certain subspecialties of cardiology, which I think can make more. Um, but yeah, the cardiology is listed as number three. Then we have ENT. Uh, those are ear, nose, and throat, uh, and the head and neck surgeons. Uh, they That's listed as 469,000. Then urology is listed under that. So yet another surgical specialty. Uh, they're listed at 461,000. And then gastroenterology, hey, another internal medicine subspecialty, uh, they're listed at 453. So what do all these top specialties have in common? They involve procedures. Uh, generally speaking in medicine, if you're doing surgeries or procedures, you're usually going to command a higher income than if your work is mostly non-procedural. Now, what does all this mean? Are people just going into medicine because they want to make a lot of money? I don't think that's the case. I think most people who become doctors, they do it for altruistic reasons. They're into it because they want to help people. They want to apply science. They've got a strong interest in the subject matter. Um, I don't think people do it as a get rich quick scheme because it, it certainly is not get rich quick. I mean, even the even primary care doctors spent 11 years in school after high school. But even with all that said, if you were to draw kind of a graph listing the most competitive specialties, the ones that are the hardest to get into, and the average salaries, they do kind of correlate. So I think people do consider salary as uh, something to think about when they're picking their uh, respective specialty of choice. So I'll tell you my story. How did I end up in a specialty that is nowhere on the podium here as far as highest paid medical specialties? Well, uh, to start with, you know, I never really cared a whole lot about money. It, it, it just wasn't that important to me. I mean, I'm a guy who wore the same Wrangler jeans I bought at Walmart for years and years. I uh, drove the same Honda Civic I had in college. I actually still have the, the same car. And it's, it's going strong. It doesn't look like much, but as Han Solo said of the Millennium Falcon, it's got it where it counts. But anyway, you know, I never really was that into um, money. You know, I, I never saw myself as somebody who wanted to one day own a Porsche or one of those cliche mid-2000s homes with the uh, infinity pools. Um, yeah, it just wasn't something that I was into. But then in medical school, I finally came to the understanding that certain specialties make a whole lot more than others. Before medical school, I thought that, okay, maybe a specialist might make 20% more than a generalist. 
but I was uh, actually kind of shocked to see that some of these specialists, you know, they make two times or three times as much as other other doctors. And so sure, even though I didn't care about getting rich or anything, I also didn't want to feel like I was getting shafted, right? Because it's a big investment to go to medical school. Even just the cost alone, it's a quarter of a million dollars plus, and then the amount of time required, you're looking at four years of medical school, um, to say nothing of the four years of pre-med study before that, and then three plus years of residency, it's a huge commitment. And anyone doing that is going to want to make sure they see a, a return on their investment at the end. So I'm not proud of this. I'm only saying this because this is years after the fact. I feel like I can, I can talk about it and be honest about it. Uh, when I was in medical school, I actually tried to convince myself to like the uh, higher paid medical specialties. So things like dermatology or, or radiology. In fact, I even did a summer internship doing research work in radiology. Um, and then I look, I thought about ophthalmology for a second there. And then another big one was anesthesiology. I did a lot of electives in anesthesia, you know, in, in trying to, I mean, I know it's not all about the money and, and, you know, I, I, but I wanted to try to see if maybe there is something about these specialties that would really spark my interest and something that I could be passionate about. And what I found is the answer was no, at least not at that time. Um, I just, with anesthesiology, I didn't feel very comfortable in the operating room setting. And I kind of missed just the rounding on patients in the hospital or, or the clinic. And that's something that I didn't get to do in anesthesiology. And so that didn't seem like a good fit. And then radiology had its own, um, I mean, so a lot of radiologists do a lot of clinical work. They see patients, they'll do procedures, but the classic diagnostic radiologist, you know, most of the day is going to be spent reading scans and and that's something that I just didn't have a passion for. And so thankfully, I did come to my senses and I realized, look, you just can't pick a specialty because of because of the money. You got to go into something that you are passionate about and something that you're excited to take part in. And so that's how I ended up in internal medicine. I just asked myself, number one, you know, where do I feel most comfortable? Well, I like the hospital setting. I like rounding on patients in the hospital from day to day. I like watching their progress over time. I like getting to know the patients and their families, and I like having enough time to do that. I don't want to be in a very busy um, clinic, uh, clinic schedule, for example. I like to work in the hospital where I got the whole day uh, to work with the patients. And so that's why internal medicine, more specifically hospital medicine, uh, really seemed like the best fit for me. Now, looking back on it, do I regret that choice for financial reasons? And, you know, actually, the answer really is no. If I could go back and tell myself any sort of advice now, you know, 10 years after medical school, I would say don't get so obsessed with the idea of your future salary because the fact is no matter what specialty you go into, you make enough money to pay your bills and even pay off your debt. So it's not like it makes that huge of a difference. And also anybody who's really making a lot, you know, they're getting taxed at the highest possible tax bracket for that. So you, you kind of reach a point of diminishing returns, I think. And also there are ways to supplement your income. For example, even as an internal medicine doctor, uh, some of them, you know, can make a whole lot more by doing things like overnight shifts or extra shifts on the weekends. And so if you need, feel like you need to make a little bit more, there's plenty of opportunities to do that. Okay, I hope this video was helpful. If you want to see more healthcare related content, here's a video you can check out there. Uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button here and I will catch you guys next time. Thank you.